Mr. Sig, you have been involved with Chinese art since the 1970s, and over the years you have built up the greatest collection of contemporary Chinese artworks. Is this a passion, or do you see Chinese art more as an investment? Uh, very clearly, it's passion. If at the time, in the 70s, somebody would have talked about art, Chinese art being an investment, it would have been totally ridiculous. But later, yes, it became a in good investment. When interest rates are low, a lot more investors turn their attention to alternative investment vehicles, hoping to earn better returns. Do investments in art generally pay off? Uh, it's, of course, with everything, if you do it well, then clearly uh, there is a reward there. But you have to do the right choices, you have to do it with knowledge, with intuition, and probably also with uh, advice. What advice would you give to someone wanting to invest in Chinese art? What should they look out for when choosing works to buy? If this is an investment, then uh, of course the two-dimensional artworks win the price. That means painting. Painting is where the high prices are. Yes, there is photography, there is installation, but painting will be the topic. You have been observing the market for Chinese art for 40 years. You are probably more aware than anyone else of the sometimes dramatic rises in the value of art from China. Do you think the boom is now over? It is true that the boom has flattened out, but uh, still uh, there is a deep market, there is demand by new Chinese collectors joining in, and if only 100 collectors uh, come into the market, then there is enough demand to uh, substantially raise prices in the long term. Mr. Sig, you know a lot of the artists personally, and you have a special insight into China's art scene. Is there enough quality out there to satisfy demand? There is a very substantial art production in China. Not all of it is world class, but uh, there is uh, enough supply to have a, a real uh, large market with some liquidity.